Okay, Dom, you can start. You can start talking. There's 23 people in listening right now. So. Oh, oh, there really are. I don't see any numbers up there. Okay, boy, this is fantastic that people are here. Thank you so much, Elisa. Sure. For those that have joined, thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your time. I think that's one of the most things, one of the most valuable things that we have today in the world is time. And uh, fortunately and unfortunately, because of this virus, we have all been blessed with a handful of time. Time to spend time with our family, you know, communicating with friends, and also being able to reevaluate maybe our position in the world of what kind of a footprint do we want to leave for our family and friends and our future generations. And I think that's what I always do in my life. I reevaluate my, my worth and my skill base and who I am as a person. Can I notch that up a little bit better each day? So I think what this gives us is the opportunity to spend a little bit of time to reevaluate, to maybe even discover and, and you know, uncover parts of who we are as people. So this is fantastic that we have this opportunity. Thank you so much. With all of you that are there, I, I am. my name is Dom Famularo, and I have got a, a fantastic life. I am living my dream and my vision of what I have. I get a chance to live my passion every day. And I, in my life, I'm a drummer. I started playing drums. I play Mapex drums, and I'm involved with the KHS Academic Alliance. And uh, this is a company that is involved with Mapex, Jupiter, and Majestic, some phenomenal products. Mapex, of course, making fantastic drums. Jupiter, which has different horns and fantastic products that, that I have with my children plays Jupiter products. And Majestic, which is the percussion product that they make, which is fantastic. So this company has you know, believed in education. So as I got involved with Mapex over 20 years ago, there have been some incredible initiatives that has allowed me to reach the world of speaking and asking questions and being involved with people globally. I've traveled to over 60 countries. I stopped counting at 60. And part of this was to, you know, me as an, as an individual musician, and then as an educator, I started teaching at the age of 17. So I've been teaching now for about, you know, almost, you know, my gosh, 48 years. What that's taught me is not only education of sharing information, but it's taught me how to be myself personally, a constant student. And that's something which I really, really admire and something which I really, really try and, and maintain every day, that if I am constantly learning, then I have the ability to grow. If I am growing, I am becoming a better person, a better musician, and I get to leave a larger footprint in this earth when I finally leave. So it came down to with many of my students that I had many years ago as they were coming to me, I started to see that students, they wanted to learn the instrument, and here I am doing these lectures worldwide. But many students came up and they seemed like they did not believe in themselves enough. They did not have what I call self-empowerment. So this word kept on visiting me throughout my course of my travels. that I started to see people that were disempowered. They didn't believe in themselves. They didn't have the, the confidence or the courage to do what they wanted to do. So they kind of just learned the craft and just didn't believe that they could do this as a living being involved in the music industry. Now I started playing drums at the age of 11. By the time I was 12, I had taken a year's worth of lessons. And all of a sudden at that particular point, in 1965, there were many bands that were playing. So I joined the band, started playing. Next thing I knew I was playing drums with some bands and I was making money, earning a living at the age of 12, playing with different types of music. At that time, there were many functions that were going on, private parties that you can play. I was young and I was working with older musicians. So the older musicians were kind of guiding me along the way and they were pulling me up with their knowledge and how they were playing. So I had to keep on, you know, keeping my eyes and ears open so I can play and give them and deliver to them what they needed to have for the music. Well, it kept on growing as they liked what I was doing. More bands requested me. And before you know it, I was working very, very often, still in junior high school. So I was still going to school during the day and the evenings I had rehearsals and, 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 and performances. So on the weekends, Friday night, and Saturday night, even Sunday evening, I was working, making good money at the age of 12. So that really kind of convinced me that if I, can, if I can have fun doing this and I can keep on learning and growing, I could then maybe make this a complete life. So my dream at that point was but what if, what if I could play the drums, make a living, and travel around the world? Now, that was a pretty heady, you know, request. And when I said that to many of the people around me, I grew up in a small town in New York here on Long Island. And 
people would say to me, oh, listen, you, 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 that's way out of your league. You, you're, you're a good drummer. That's nice. But to make a living doing this, you're way out of your league. You got to go out and get a regular job and just be able to fund yourself that way and just do music on the weekends. To just do music on the weekends. Well, I felt, I said, you know, that, 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 wasn't, that wasn't really good enough for me. I wanted to really do something more fully with my life because I loved playing music. I loved being around music. I loved the feeling that it gave me. And I loved the feeling that I was able to produce for other people. When I played musically in a band and I saw people listening and enjoying themselves and tapping their feet and or getting up to dancing, this was the communication that through this, this instrument that I was playing, I could create a feel with other musicians and we could play songs that were popular at that time on the radio. And these people could relate to it and it would bring them enjoyment. I thought this was huge. This was huge. It's unbelievable to experience that feeling. And that really comes down to the power of music. Anyone that's involved in playing music, if you listen to music, there is a power in music that to me is really, really absolutely exciting and very, very empowering. And I go back to that word to empower. Empowerment means to give power. To give power which means that's one example in teaching. When I teach a student, I'm trying to give them the power of knowledge. Well, empowerment, this is a very important word because what I was seeing is that many of my students, people that I met, were not self-empowered. Self-empowered, that means they weren't giving power to themselves first. You see, I cannot empower you until I am first empowered, until I have the confidence, the courage, and the strength of believing who I am as a person and as a musician, I can't do anything with that until that's strong. And then I can deliver that to the outside people. So I cannot make you happy until I am first happy for the same reason that I cannot love you until I first love myself. So that became the, the internal cycle that I use for empowerment. So I had to empower myself first before I could empower others. And that's where I came down to the understanding of self-empowerment. Well, in traveling around the world, I kept on teaching and I'm giving lectures and clinics around the world. And I started to meet people that were, were understanding what empowerment was, but they didn't totally concept, grab the concept of what self-empowerment was. So with that, I began to write down notes of ideas of what was empowering me. How am I empowering myself? And I came up with a concept, an actual chart. And in this chart, it came to me in, in an evening one night, three o'clock in the morning, I wake up in the middle of the night and I see this chart envisioned in my head and I just see it clearly. So I quickly grab a pencil and paper and I jot this out, kind of sketched for what it was, then fell asleep, woke up the next morning and I looked at it. And the chart is really what I had written out. I just then elaborated on it and that became the formation and the cycle of my book, The Cycle of Self-Empowerment. So I eventually, from that cycle, I wrote this book, The Cycle of Self-Empowerment. And this book has sold through over 30 countries, and I do these different lectures around the world, which is extremely exciting for me to see people become self-empowered. Let's go down to the chart now, if we can. Let's look at the chart. I'm going to pull this up. I think I can pull this up into the chat section here. I think if I go down to offers here, I think in your chat section, it should be the chart. This is the chart of The Cycle of Self-Empowerment. Now, what's amazing is to have this opportunity in this time where we're all sequestered at home and we're in the comforts of your own home and we have this information coming to you and I'm talking to a screen that I see myself, so I don't see you. So I'm hoping that someone is listening out there to be able to take this in. It could be no one and this could be a great exercise for me in the explanation of what the cycle of self-empowerment is about. But in, the, in this here, hosted by Elisa at the International Music Education Summit, this allows this message to get out to you, and hopefully you can pull something from this. And any questions you have, feel free to ask any questions in the chat section. So let's discuss the cycle of self-empowerment. This really begins to me at the start of what passion is. Now, I'm going to see if I can get this at the, I'm not sure if you can see the actual, it starts with passion in the bottom of this here. We start here. That to me is the beginning fuel to understand your passion. If you're involved with music and you are driven to want to play music, you are driven to want to hear music and you're driven to practice and learn music by taking lessons from a teacher. And each time you take that lesson, you amp up your ability another notch. 
that lesson keeps bringing you up to another notch. That the person you are when you walk into the lesson is not the same person that leaves that lesson. When you start a lesson and you start opening your mind to take in new information, see, the mind, I believe, is like a parachute. It really is. It only works when it's open. So we have to keep our mind open at all times to let information in that can allow this information for me to grow. Passion for me was the first place to begin. When you are passionate about something, you have a strong desire, you are driven, you want that. At the age of 11, it, for me, it started out, there was a television show on Sunday nights that had different bands performing. And in February 9th of 19, the Beatles performing. The excitement that they had and the love that they had in playing and just their music and the play was pretty powerful for me. So that's where my passion really began. I became passionate about music. I became passionate about listening to music and passionate about learning music. So I believe it starts with that passion. That's the bottom foundation of what we have. Passion is that drive. If you don't understand your passion, stop and evaluate what is it that you love? Listen, you might have a passion in cooking. You might have a passion for fishing. You might have a passion for sports. Passion can come in many different areas and you can have several different types of passion. So to me, it's not just one passion you have to have. You can be passionate about several different things. Well, for me, music hit me really strong. It hit me strong in the fact that I felt that, gosh, I have got to, I've, I've got to get further into this. I've got to dig deeper. And then when I get deeper into that, I'm going to do music, musical books. I play some piano. So I write some songs. So in all of that composition and music and drumming, I bring this all together, moves up to the top part of what I call the dream and the vision, the dream and the vision. This is, this is pretty interesting. The dream and the vision. In the research of writing my book, I started to discover that there was a difference between the dream and the vision. The dream and a vision and vision. You see, for me, these two words, sometimes people use the same way. I started realizing that there was a difference in what these two words meant. For me, the dream, the dream was like, gosh, you know, could I play the drums and travel around the world and make a living doing this. That was a dream. That was the what if. What if I could play music, study really well, become good at my craft, and then eventually go out there and work where I can make monetary, I can make money from this skill and this talent. Now imagine what that's like to be able to earn money doing what you love doing. This is huge. This is totally huge. This is totally the idea of being able to say, I'm going to push myself as far as I can, because if that can happen, the what if, the dream, what if I could do that? Well, then I realize, listen, I can dream all I want to dream. I've got to bring this to as close of a reality as I can. So the vision for me is the how to. How do I do that? What are the steps that I can achieve that? I can dream all I want, but I want to take this dream into a vision, a laser-like focused vision that I can totally utilize the drive that I have and the lessons that I'm taking and the studying of this craft in music to the next level. So my passion was fueling my dream and my vision. When my vision started to become clear that I could go out and I could work and play music and teach and write books, when that happened and I started to see the clarity of my vision, that further came down and fueled my passion again. So that's where the first beginning part of the cycle comes in. Your passion fuels your dream. Your dream focuses into that vision. Your vision with the clarity begins down to fuel that passion again. So I was firing myself up. I was, every spark plug in my body was on fire. It was sparking and I was feeling the excitement of it. So on a weekly basis, I would take lessons. Now, of course, at that time, I would go to a teacher's studio and I would take lessons. Now I'm teaching online and I've been teaching online now for about close to 15 years. I was one of the first educators to start teaching online and I've been doing it this way for a long, long time. And out of the 2,500 drum students that I have, if you can imagine, probably about 70% of them were online, 30% were coming to me. Well, when this pandemic happened and we were all sequestered to stay home and I had them this morning before this session here, when I'm done with this session, 
I'm going to go back and handle a couple more students that I do. So this is really exciting for me to continue teaching this way, which means you have accessibility to learn. It's literally at your fingertips. In my younger days, way before we had the internet, we had to go out and we had to fight for the information. If I wanted to go read a book or, or listen to a recording, I had to hop on my bicycle and drive, ride, I should say, to the library. I had to get to the library several miles from my house. I'd go to the library, have to go in there, find the book, take the book out, go and do it. So it was a longer process. Now that information is literally at your fingertips. You go by and you've got it in the internet, YouTube, Google, man, bring it on. I've got that information and I can have it quickly. So with that now, to me, my passion now is being even fueled more because I can take information in at a faster pace and I can, again, allow myself, the student of me, to continue learning. So from that process of that passion to that dream and vision, that became the overall cycle. Now, the inner workings of this cycle, if you, can, if you can look into your chat section, the inner working of the cycle takes me to the next level, which is the foundation. Listen, the passion is the flame. That's the desire. That's what's going to drive you. Now I needed to understand a foundation for this cycle of self-empowerment. The foundation took me to study more of where my family came from. And an exercise that I did when I was younger was I sat down and I interviewed my grandparents. Now think about what that is. If your grandparents are still around, sit down with them and ask them questions what it was like when they were younger. Because they come from a different generation. So my grandparents, who all four of them came from Italy and came to America in the early 1900s. When I sat down with my grandparents and asked them questions, I started learning about the qualities of who they were and the types of personality traits that they had that were so inspiring. I mean, so inspiring. So I go to the center part of what I call the tools of the cycle of self-empowerment. And there are several words that are there that we'll speak about that became the fundamental foundation of what I had to learn about what my family was like, then what my parents were like and what I learned from them, and then what qualities I can use in my own personality. So in there, let's take a word like morals. In the inner circle of the cycle under the foundation section is a word called morals. Morals. Can anyone tell me what I have? Morals. Let's talk about morals. Morals to me, this is really powerful. Morals is knowing the difference between right and wrong. This really is an important part of what's happening here. Knowing the difference between right and wrong. This is huge. Now, we've got several people here, David, Nana, and Robin, and Michael, and Jack, and Beth. Thank you so much for joining us here. Morals. Let's talk about morals. Morals is knowing the difference between right and wrong. I've gone to several high schools and universities, and I have asked large crowds of 1,000 to 2,000 students what morals were. And many of them look at me not knowing how to answer that. Sometimes someone will say, morals, that's like doing things you like doing. Well, not necessarily. It's simple. It's knowing the difference between right and wrong. That's what morals is. Obviously, hurting someone, I would consider to be wrong. So that would be going against my moral standards. So I've got to understand what these words are, and I've got to understand what the definition of these words are so I know how to use them. And that's the key aspect of what I find with many of these words. you got to understand what the word means so you know how and when to use it. So, for example, let's take a word like, like values. What values? Values, to me, is the priority that you put in your morals. So if one of your values is to be an honest person, that value means you're going to strike up a much higher moral code because you're going to have that code that you're going to try and not to lie in your life. You're going to try and be as honest as you can. So ethics, ethics comes into place where ethics is the code that you use. You know, listen, fire departments and policemen, they have a code of ethics and their code of ethics is very, very strong. And that code of ethics brings in honor, brings in service, that code of ethics is strong. If that code of ethics is strong, that means they put a high value on their code of ethics. If they put a high value on their code of ethics, that means their moral standard is at a really high level. So these words that I put in here are words that work together extremely well. And getting to know these words is a part of the understanding 
of what the cycle of self-empowerment is about. So the other words are principles. Are you a person of principles? Do you have strong principles? Do you have a strong character? Do you have character where it's a point of, of like, people can really believe in you? This word is so, so important to use. If there is no trust in the relationship, there really is no relationship. There has to be trust. Trust is that I really believe that what you are telling me is the core of who you are, and I can absolutely follow you because your trust is screaming loud and clear. With that, that's extremely important. So trust is one of the words in the cycle of self-empowerment. Let's take a word like, um, take a word like integrity. Integrity, integrity. Boy, I love this word, integrity. Integrity is, is you know, if you say it, you'll do it. If you say it, you'll do it. The integrity. I mean, if I say I'm going to meet you at eight o'clock for myself, I'm going to be there probably a little bit before eight o'clock because I gave you my word, my word that that word was very important that if I said it, I'm going to be there. I don't say eight o'clock and then show up by 830 or 845 because that would show disrespect to that person. Well, if I don't have the integrity to stand behind my words and I show up late, that person now cannot trust me. So all of these words interrelate to each other. So if I do not have the integrity to stand behind my word, do my actions speak louder than my words? Will I do what I say is what integrity is about. But that's a deep, that's a really deep, deep word. I mean, and, and it's very important for all of us to understand that and have that. You know, I realized when I was traveling around the world that many of these words that I'm talking about, people use these words, but they really didn't know what these words meant. So when I would ask them what they think the word meant, they were kind of lost. So that's why in my book, The Cycle of Self-Empowerment, I went down and I described each word and gave the definition and gave an explanation of what that word meant. So we can have an understanding of what these words are about. So we talked about trust. We talked about integrity. Let's talk about, let's talk about something like perseverance. I like that word perseverance. Perseverance, this word to me is one of the key words for success. Everyone that I have met in my life that has been highly successful always talks about perseverance. And perseverance basically means to never give up. Giving up is not an option. You just don't give up. You persevere. You continue. Now, as a musician, this is kind of inc incredible because as a musician, we have challenges with learning the skills of music learning the scales, developing the armature, developing technique for drummers and different percussionists. I've got to put hard time into that. I've got to put hours into practice so I can develop the muscles to give me the skills that I can have to take this to the next level. So to me, perseverance is huge to never give up. This is the skill of being able to say that I'm going to just keep at it until I can overcome it. So when I was given certain exercises as a musician, and I was not able to play it at that time. If I couldn't play it at that time, that didn't mean I didn't have the ability to play it. That just meant I couldn't play it at that time. So by putting practicing time into it and persevering on that skill base over and over, eventually my muscle memory kicked in and I began to learn that skill and all of a sudden I could do it. So perseverance is the skill of being able to move forward. It's a tool. I look at all of these as tools. It's just one big one big toolbox. And if I understand the toolbox of what it is, I understand that all of these words fit into my toolbox. And this is extremely helpful in what I can do. Perseverance. Let's go to another one. Let's take something like, um, let's take self-discipline. Self-discipline. Well, here's another word. I got to make sure I mark these off because I got a couple key ones that I want to give to you. Self-discipline is a word that really understands what it is about, what I can do. Discipline means self-control, self-control. I've got three boys. Now they're much older now. They're in their, in their mid-20s. And what's amazing about it, when they were younger, I'd say, guys, I want you to clean your room. So I said, I want you to have the discipline to clean your own room and do it. And I said, if you don't clean your room, then you're asking me to have to discipline you to clean your room. So I wanted them to have the ability of self-discipline, that when they had a responsibility, they could then do it on their own to take charge and do that. And they did. They did. They learned that they had to do it because they knew if they didn't do it, 
I came back in the picture and I said, you don't want to go against your dad. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to work with you and we're going to make it harder. So if you do it, just get it done. So self-discipline is self-control. Do you have the ability of doing that, of doing that on your own? Self-control. Now, self-control means if I have the self-control, it's my self-control that's going to help me to persevere. If I persevere and I continue, I'm going to develop a higher level of trust. If I stand behind my word, I'm going to have a higher level of integrity. All of these words work with each other. And understanding what the word is, is an extremely important part of the journey of what we have here. So to me, that was part of the excitement of what this was about. Let's take another word. Let's take a word like patience. I love this word, patience. Patience. I have a, in the course of my travels, I usually travel to about 10 to 15 countries every year. And to travel at that level, to be able to go there and travel, it is pretty intense. And when you're traveling at the pace that I travel, I'm in airports all the time. Well, being in airports, you have to have patience because getting in line and waiting to get to your seat, you just need patience. And I see many people that do not have patience. They want to rush in the line. They want to get in there. They don't care if they step on people. They push their way in. They're just very, very assertive or aggressive. Now, what that means is the difference of those two words. Aggressive is getting what you want, but not doing it politely. It's stepping over people and pushing people out of the way. That's an aggressive person. An assertive person, to be assertive, that's the kind of person that gets what they want, but they do it in a polite way. Say, excuse me. Say, pardon me. Allow that person to realize that you're trying to achieve something, but you're doing it not at the expense of someone else. So to me, I like the word being assertive. If I can do that, I'm doing that within the proper morals of how I want to treat people which is treating people very fairly. So patience is a very important part of being able to wait politely. That's really what patience is, to wait politely. When I see people that are not patient, they're not waiting, and they're being rude. They're rustling, they're trying to push people around, they're trying to come into the situation negatively. Oh my gosh, that is very, very uncomfortable. So again, patience is about to wait politely. These are words that I felt that if I understand what self-empowerment was, if I can utilize these tools, I can bring myself to a higher level of understanding of who I am, and then I can relate to people better. Now, I travel around the world pretty intensely, and I built a career of not only am I performing around the world, not only do I do different seminars and master classes and clinics around the world, but I also write books. I write drumming books. I've written 14 drum method books that I publish on my own, and they are distributed worldwide. And all the drum books are about different areas of drumming. There are different aspects of drumming. And I'm actually working on three more drumming books right now. And with that, as I write these, I utilize the workings of these books with my students. So I work it out with my students. How does the material work out? So sometimes it takes me between four or five years to write a book because I'm working this material with my students to make sure it's right before it goes to publication. Then I begin to write motivational books, which is where the cycle of self-empowerment came up. That popped out of the place because all of a sudden I realized that I needed to kind of explain more about empowerment. And these words that we're talking about are such important words to have. Let's go to another word. Let's take a word like enthusiasm. Enthusiasm as a tool for you to use. Enthusiasm. This is so important. When I was in college, I had an economics professor. And we had about 300 people in the, in the room, in the class that we had. And we were all kind of sitting in tiered seating. So the seats were kind of high. We were looking down at the teacher. And the teacher came up and he said, thank you very much for coming here. This is my first day of teaching. I'm a new teacher. I'm very excited. I want to teach you about the economics of the world scene. Let's open up our book and study the Bolshevik revolution of Russia. Thank you very much. He said this in a way that was so unexciting and so drained to me. It just completely pulled any energy I had in me and sucked it out of me. I was like drained. It was so boring. And so just, just, it was just draining. So with that, I realized that this was really about this, this, listen, this guy was not exciting. And he's thinking about a subject matter that I was not passionate about. 
So my point to you is enthusiasm. What does enthusiasm mean? If we go back to the Greek word enthusiasmo, it basically means filled with God. Someone that is filled with God is someone that really learns to love life and live life in the moment. Enthusiasm. So the enthusiasm to me has to come in your voice and in your personality all the time. This is a major tool. If I came up here and I started talking about you, about self-empowerment, and I said, Hi, I'm Dom Pamilaro, and um, we're going to talk about self-empowerment. This is very important. Self-empowerment is is uh, important to have. It's about yourself, and it's about empowerment. That, to me, is not delivering the message that's going to reach you. Here I am talking to my computer, my camera here. It's going to you. I hope you can feel the enthusiasm from this. The enthusiasm has to have a certain amount of energy behind it. And if that is energy that is coming from your passion, if you're passionate about something, the enthusiasm is going to be natural. You're going to be there. It's going to work really, really well. So again, we go back to that passion. That's the flame. That's the flame that's going to start this here. So if I'm speaking about music and or drumming, I am totally enthusiastic about this because I am having great fun in the music industry. And this is absolutely this is absolutely an important part of the journey of being able to deliver the message with great enthusiasm. Now, to me, these are words that are so powerful that, again, they're just tools. So th- to me, enthusiasm is one of those tools that I have. Integrity is a tool. Respect is a tool. Respect, to respect people. Compassion is a t- Compassion, this word, compassion, if there's ever a time that we need to have more compassion in the world, it's right now. You know, one of the reasons why we're being asked to stay at home is to have the compassion for someone else. I might be a carrier and I might create these germs and this virus to be spread to someone else. If I stay home, it's because I don't want to hurt anybody else. I absolutely don't want to bring this upon someone that might be younger or older than myself, that if I knew that I was able to pass this virus to someone, that really would, that, that would destroy me that if I brought this upon someone. So we're being asked to stay home to have a level of compassion for other people. We are all humans on this planet. And if we show more compassion, now compassion basically means to feel what other people feel. This is it. This is everything. To feel what other people feel. If I am that sensitive to someone else that I can feel what they feel and I can really be empathic I can have empathy to feel that and know how they feel. Listen, everyone that you will come across to in your life, young or old, and I speak to the kids too, people that you meet, each person that we meet, they're fighting their own battles. We all have challenges and we all have baggage. We all have insecurities. We all have relatively sometimes esteem challenges of what we think of ourselves. When I was younger, I was a child that had to wear glasses when I was eight years old. So at eight years old, I'm wearing glasses and all of my friends called me four eyes. They, that was just, you know, they, they would just tease me, hey, four eyes. And that kind of hurt me because I had to wear these glasses. Because of wearing glasses, I couldn't play all the sports I wanted to play. When I played sports, I sweated, my glasses came off and fell. It was always a, always a challenge. And then because of that, I developed a stammering challenge where I would stutter. Let me tell you something about stuttering. It's not fun. But as a child, I had this challenge of stammering, to stutter. Now, if you've ever met someone that stuttered, it's very uncomfortable. I would hit a certain word, and I couldn't get past that word. It would be, hi, I want to. It was challenging. And when I hit that word and I stuttered and stammered, people further made fun of me. So they made fun of me because of the way I spoke, and they made fun of me because of the way I've looked because of my glasses. Man, I had very, very low self-esteem. Self-esteem is another one of these tools. To look at yourself and believe in yourself that you are a good person, you can achieve great things, look in the mirror and tell that person in the mirror, you can do this. Is the road going to be easy? Absolutely not. Are there going to be challenges? Absolutely. Totally. But the point is, if I can look at these challenges and I can take each challenge and I can begin the process of overcoming this challenge, 
by using the different tools that I have to use these different words. These are not just words. These are actions. These are actions. Compassion is an action. To feel what someone feels, to be able to listen to what someone's saying and feel what they're feeling. Feel what they're feeling and step into that person's soul and be with them and be with as close as you can with them as they're speaking. Step into their shoes, as they say. I'm going to look at some of these words here. Okay, an interesting question. Does anyone have, a, 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 anyone have any experience being overly enthusiastic? To be overly enthusiastic. Great question. And I got to tell you something. I would rather have somebody overly enthusiastic than somebody who is totally not enthusiastic. I would rather have that kind of energy where someone's so excited about what they do. See, someone who's overly enthusiastic is a person that really is passionate. If you go back to compassion and hear where that person is coming from, if they're overly enthusiastic, you have the choice to either flow with their energy or not. So to me, that overly enthusiastic person, I kind of like that. I'd kind of rather have that because that allows energy to come down and energy creates success. Energy creates success. Focused energy guarantees it if I focus that energy. So enthusiasm is extremely important. Okay, the level of enthusiasm you choose to use, that's your call. When I'm speaking to you right now, I think you can sense my enthusiasm in speaking to you. I want to deliver the message to you. And hopefully you can pull something out of this in a way that you can walk away saying, you know, maybe I need to amp up my enthusiasm or maybe I need to pull it back a little. That you can choose your level. Listen, you're not going to make everyone happy in this world. The first person you have to make happy is yourself. And if you have a strong moral code, if you have the foundation of these words that I'm explaining, and those are truly inside of who you are, and you're a good person, don't worry if you're overly enthusiastic. Just go and be a good person. I would rather have a good person in my face sharing what their passion is. I think that's extremely exciting. So again, I go back to passion and compassion. Passion is a strong desire. Compassion is to be empathic, to be feeling what other people feel. So this is another part of these words and how we go along these words. Let's go down to, I'd like to look at one more word here. Let's take a word like, let's take a word like humility. Humility. This is a very important word. Sometimes when I meet people, I don't sense levels of humility. My parents, bless their souls, were wonderfully, you know, very humble people. And they taught us to be humble. Humility basically means that I, I, I understand where I am, and I know that there's always going to be someone better than me. So I want to be humble that I can always be able to grow and learn. To be humble, to be in the service of others, which is an extremely important part of the process. So humility is a very important trait. There's a dear friend of mine who's a fantastic drummer. His name is Steve Gadd. He's one of the top drummers in the world. He performs with everybody. He's still on the road traveling. He's a fantastic inspiration in the music industry. He has recorded over thousands of albums and recordings. Great, great, great player, but a great person. When you speak to Steve, he is just an example of humility. With all the, the performances he's have has around the world and all the great artists that he's performed with, he still is a very down-to-earth, humble person. This, to me, is such a redeeming quality in people that when I sense a level of humility, it really brings me to the next level. This is extremely exciting. So these words that we have here, you can download the actual graph and you can you check out all the rest of these words that they are. Let's go to the next level, which is the process. The process now on this chart, let me see if I can put this chart then back, back into the chat section. The chart now, we're going up now to the next level, which is now the steps to the vision. When I say the steps to the vision, which is an important part of the process. The steps to the vision. Goal number one for me is to know before you go. Before you start any journey, I want to know what I'm trying to achieve in that journey. When I practice my instrument, I want to look at the exercise I'm practicing, and I'm an, I want to know what I want to achieve from that lesson. What I want to achieve from the bigger picture of what I'm doing, and then what I want to achieve from that individual lesson. Each lesson is a step on that ladder. So first, to know before you go. Have it planned out where you can say, listen, here's what I want to achieve. That's what I want to get to. Let's start getting this and setting the steps to get to that level. So that's know before you go. 
be able to have the plan clear. Second step is to strategize. Now that you know, you know where you want to go, the next is to strategize. What's the plan? Well, when I knew I wanted to be a drummer and travel around the world, I knew I had to study from the best players that I could find. I had to find the best schooling I could find. So I did just that. If I wanted that level of a high level of vision, I knew what I wanted to achieve. I had to find the best plan, and that was to find the best educators I could. That was my plan. And I studied with some of the best renowned legends in our, our art form, and I was blessed to have known them. And because I live in the New York area, I live now about one hour outside of New York. So when I was younger, I grew up very close to New York. So within 15 minutes, I could be in New York City. And in New York City, all these great musicians and these great artists were performing and teaching there. So I had the chance to, to get into New York and go and learn from these great, great masters. So the first part is to know before you go. Then we get into strategize. Strategize is the plan. Now, once we have that plan, the third goal of that, of that ladder, is to stay on course. This is totally what it's all about, to stay on course. You could have a great plan. If you don't stay on course, the plan doesn't mean anything. You've got to seek and follow the plan all the way through. That doesn't mean that the plan might not change in the course of your journey. You're always going to have challenges, but you're always going to have challenges that are going to be in front of you. So staying on course is extremely important. In my life, I've always had two paths that have come across me. In everything that I've done, two paths. One was the path of least resistance. The other was the path of most resistance. So in that journey, I always choose, every single time, I choose the path of most resistance. Because the path of least resistance is the easy way out. I'm not going to learn that much there. The path of most resistance, I'm really going to take this in. It's going to challenge me. Challenge me. I love that word challenge. To stay on course, you have to be willing to be challenged. Now, one exercise that I did for myself is I removed the word problem from my vocabulary. I don't use it anymore. Because the word problem for me, everybody says... I have a problem with this. I have a problem with that. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, I have a problem with my car. I've got a problem with paying rent. I've got problem. Listen, that to me was draining energy out of me. So I removed the word problem and I replaced it with the word challenge. See, a problem to me was pushing me down. With a challenge, I found that I rose to the challenge. In order for me to stay on course, I had to face that challenge and rise to it. So I replaced the word problem with the word challenge. But here's what's interesting about the word challenge. Inside the word challenge is the word change. Inside the word challenge is the word change. Write the word challenge and then highlight the word change. The only way you can accept that challenge is if you're willing to change, to evolve, to discover and uncover new areas about yourself. So now with that word challenge, as an exercise, I just ask you, just try that. Do not use the word problem. Use the word challenge. I felt myself being lifted. I got a flat tire going to a meeting. I had to stop and fix the flat tire. I could have complained about it. I could have said things. I could have, I, I showed up a little bit late, but I, I showed up and continued on. I let no one know that I had gotten a flat tire, that I had to change it. It was just a challenge. Was it a problem that I had? My car got a flat. No, we're all we're gonna get flats in our cars. It was a challenge. I got out, changed the tire, got back, made it to the meeting, and continued on. And no one knew the the, the difference of what I was there until later on when someone said, "Hey Dom, how you doing?" I said, "What? Well, great. I gotta go, and I got a I got a flat tire coming here, so I gotta go and change the tire. I gotta find a service station." But you got a flat tire. I said, "Yeah, on my way here, just outside of the expressway when I came in." Oh, really? But you still showed up on time. You got it. Absolutely. So to me, that was a challenge. Was I going to complain about it? Was I going to delve on it? Was I going to spend energy on it? Not at all. It happened. I moved on. That's what happens with a challenge. You accept the challenge, you overcome it, and you move on. And that for me was the process of staying on course. So this chart now, when I stood on course and I stayed to my plan, I started to see the results. My dream, my what if, started turning into my how-to. And all of a sudden at that point, as I became a better musician and I became a better person, 
people wanted to be with me. I started understanding a lot of these terminologies. I started using these words as tools. People started hiring me. I started growing more. And my career globally continues to grow. But it continues to grow because I continue to learn. That, to me, has got to be the process. That really has to be the process in all of this year. So I say to you in this journey, just take that chart. Print the chart out, chart up and hang it up in front of you. And take a different word each day and try to understand it. Take a word like maybe imagination. Now, what does that mean? Imagination. Step into that word. Listen, Einstein said imagination was more powerful than knowledge. Imagination was your creativity. If you can allow yourself to imagine something, that can open up new ideas of thought. And Einstein said it was imagination that helped him to uncover many of his theories. Imagination, the power of imagination. Listen, John Lennon's song, Imagination, is the, the, was voted the greatest song in the 20th century. Go back and listen to the song, Imagination, and listen to the words. If there's ever a time that that song has more meaning now because of this pandemic, it is right now. We have the need to imagine a greater world at peace that we can bring upon ourselves. We can only bring upon that peace if we start working on ourselves individually with self-empowerment. We have to go back. Great Michael Jackson song, The Man in the Mirror. Before you worry about the person that you, that, that, that you want to talk to, look first at the person in the mirror. Fix that person first. Raise the level of your standard of who you are. Treat people to a higher level. Empower yourself with a skill and a moral that people look at you and they say, my gosh, that is a leader. That's a person that I want to absolutely follow. Find that word change inside that word challenge and accept it. Accept the challenge and then accept change. And push yourself to a level much higher than you could ever imagine. And I promise you, you will experience empowerment not only for yourself, then you can start to empower others. And that's where the journey really begins. When you start to influence people and you start to inspire them and you start to bring people to a whole new level where you now influence them, where you are now inside their soul, you're in their mind, you're inside who they are, and you help push them to another level. This is the magic of education. And this is also the magic of being a great student. So I say to you all, enjoy this journey. Enjoy the journey of self-empowerment. Step into any ideas that you have. If you have any further questions, you can actually go to my website, domfamularo.com. Feel free to email me. My email, my direct email is there. I will answer any questions you have. I will help you out in any way. I want nothing from you other than your desire to want to step to the next degree and push yourself to a level that you can now make a difference in this world. There was a great singer, Harry Chapin, who was a wonderful singer who wrote many songs years ago, Cats in the Cradle, uh, Cats in the Cradle <clears throat> and songs like Taxi, brilliant, brilliant writer in the 70s and 80s. And he died way too soon, but he was from Long Island. And I had the chance to sit down with Harry several times. And he once said to me, he said, you know, as individuals, we cannot really change the world. But individually, I believe we can bend it. We can bend this world. So I ask you to empower yourself to go out and influence people and start the bend to a positive place, to a more powerful position that you now influence people all around the world. This is fantastic. And I must tell you one more thing. I want to leave you with this thought. I really believe in all of you, whether you're students or teachers, educators, whatever you do, whoever is hearing my voice right now, I got to understand something that I believe in you. I really believe that you can go out there and empower yourself to make a difference. And music can be our voice. I believe in you. I only ask one thing from you. Prove me right. Prove me right that you can go out there and raise your consciousness to becoming even a better person, to become a better musician, and go out there and affect people in such a positive way that now your footprint is felt for generations in the future. For that, I thank you all very much. I hope you have a great, great journey in what you're doing. And again, any further questions, bring it on. Thanks. Bye-bye.